Hallelujah. Just waiting for a few people to come online. Praise God. I'm excited. I've been teaching a course on uh, prophetic prayer. And um, it's taken me 20 years to develop this. And it's it's been awesome. It's been fun being able to do it and to share it with you. And, you know, it's so wonderful to get results from from that time of prayer, from learning these principles of prayer. Praise God. Hello, uh, David. Hello, David. God bless you. Hello, uh, Michael. God bless you. I'm just excited for what God is doing. Amen. God is doing amazing things. And this is part five, actually, of the teaching. I have done this teaching once before in just audio, but I thought I would do it afresh in, in a video format and put it up on not only Facebook, but on YouTube. Hi, Anne. Good to see you online. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, wonderful to be able to teach the Word of God and uh, give you instruction as being a pastor and overseeing a prayer ministry for so many years. Um, I developed some classes and teachings and protocols and all, oh, thank you, all the things necessary. Hey, Hannah, good to see you online. God bless you. It's very vital that we take time to um, to understand what God is doing in the prayer room because... Many times we haven't been getting victory. Last time I taught about how um, you have to be uh, bold in the spirit and you have to sort of hit good targets. Hit good targets. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all, thank, thank you. It's nice to have a change. I thought I would change it up a bit, and I'm excited um, to do that. Praise God. So this next class, wow. Yeah, thank you, Bonnie, for sharing. Good point. Everyone, please share this video and broadcast because, you know, there are people who are praying and they don't know how to pray um, effectively. They've been praying and they love God and God's been listening. I mean, we have that intimate relationship with him. But God wants us to uh, pray um, and there's specific ways that we can pray to be more effective in our prayer life. Nothing's better than answered prayer, right? Nothing's better. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Nothing's better than uh, hearing his word afresh. Amen. And uh, getting those answered prayers and uh, seeing results. We all want results in our prayer life. Amen. Firstly, you know, I, I think it's Oh, God bless you, Kenneth. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Hannah. First thing I'm, I'm going to look at here is that um, we're all called to pray, each and every one of us. And God hears our prayer. Um, and I'm excited about that. Praise God. Wow, watching from Nevada. Praise God. That's awesome. So excited. Praise God. Amen. God is doing amazing things. And I love, um, I love the prophetic and I love to pray according to what God has said. You know, uh, this next class here, Hi Tracy, uh, is, is uh, in line with all the other teachings that I have. And if you don't have them, you can go to YouTube and they're all there in a playlist. I do all my courses in playlists. And as I said, I'm redoing this one because I believe y'all y'all need to have that um, in video. It's nice to have it in video format. And it, this is live too, right? This is live. So yay. Uh, live is fun. And I just love having you there. And I'm going to be looking at your comments. And what I'll try to do is read your comments uh, when they're, they fit into what I'm doing. And then hopefully answer all your questions. Usually by the time I finish a teaching, I finished uh, answering your questions, but we're going to be talking about how we're to pray with the Word of God. And, you know, that's prophetic because uh, Peter said that it is the more sure word of prophecy is the written Word of God. And this is our plumb line. This is the, the line that we go to um, 
in the spirit because we know his word is his will. And when we pray according to his word, we're praying the will of God in a situation. So I want to do just a quick review. Basically, you come, you come boldly as a king and a priest unto come unto God, right? You come to him uh, with your prayers. You know that uh, uh, he will hear you. You come boldly. You have clear goals and agenda, uh, things to look at. You know, there's different types of prayer, and I'm going to get into that later. But we're, I'm talking about prayer that is for asking and a prayer that is in alignment with what he is doing. There's times when we have prayers when it's like, um, should I go to uh, South America? Should I go to India? Should I go to Africa? What what should I do with the ministry in this area? What should I do with my life in that area? And God will get, will speak to you. Blessings, Mary. God bless you. And we can actually have um, faith to hear from God to get direction in our life. And I'm going to talk about that and teach that later. Um, and I do have a course that's called uh, Let the Word Drop. And that's hearing the voice of God. It's all on hearing the voice of God. And it's on YouTube. It's on the playlist. Go to my playlist and you'll see it there. Amen. And that, that's wonderful to have that because... Sometimes we don't know that we've actually been hearing his voice and he's been speaking all along. And sometimes there's different, we've been used to maybe one way that God speaks to us and then he uses a different way. And it's like, hey, you just did something different here and I'm not used to that. He will do that to you just to, you know, keep you alert. We need to be alert in the spirit. Amen. Need to be alert. Okay. Okay. So let's get back to this. Um, praying according to God's will. Amen. Uh, in 1 John five fourteen, and I have the scripture here. If you have a Bible, you can turn there if you want. I'll give you a minute to get there. Um, it's, it's fabulous. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of him. So when we're asking according to his will, we know that God is actually hearing us. We're, we're bringing his word before him. Ah, oh, when we bring his word before him, great things happen. He hears us. And if we, we know he's hearing us, we know we have the petitions that we're asking. Glory to God. Amen. Praying according to the will of God is huge. Now we're going to may go down to other topics. I have some more topics. I have pages and pages here of, uh, I have a manual. I have a, an, an e-manual. Um, and uh, some of you, can, if you'd like to get it, you can inbox me and uh, for a small donation, you can get an e-copy of my, of my, um, my manual on prayer. It's a great reference. But anyways, um, I can tell you more about it. There's more than just the course there. I've got every prayer that's been prayed in the Bible. And I actually even have, uh, if you're starting a ministry or or in the prayer ministry and you need a starting uh, manual of things to pray for and where to find them in the scriptures, I have that too. I have fasting and prayer, um, all sorts of stuff. But this isn't about that right now though. Amen. Okay, so... We know he hears us. We know he hears us when we pray according to his word. Amen. When we know that we're praying according to what his word says in that situation, we can have confidence. Amen. Hallelujah. That's important because many times people don't understand that principle. I think another thing that really changed my life in the prayer department, I remember... I was studying the Word of God. Praise God. Amen. Um, good to see you, Paulo. Um, when I was studying the Word of God in John 10, 34 and 35, I got an understanding that Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Word of God cannot be broken. The Scriptures could not be broken. And I started thinking about that, how... God's word could not, could not be broken. How amazing is that to know that um, 
Mm. You couldn't be broken. What does it mean? That when you lifted up the word of God over a situation, there was nothing could, that could break that word to stop it from coming to pass. Hallelujah. Praise God. There was nothing that could stop it from coming to pass. Now, I'm going to look that one up. I want you to read it. You got all get your Bibles out here. John chapter 10. Amen. You know, it's it's good to have your Bible. You know, I have, a, I have an e-Bible. I have lots of different Bibles. But I find nothing is better than opening up your Bible and sitting down. Yes, I lick my pages. Don't tell anyone, though. It's a secret. Just kidding. Could keep your humor. It's important. All right, here we go. Okay. So they were wanting to stone Jesus and get rid of him. And Jesus in verse 32 says, Many good works I have showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the, and the Jews answered him saying, For good work we don't stone you, but, you're, but for blasphemy. Because thou art being a man, make yourself God. He knew. They knew he was God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. And that's Psalm 82. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. Listen to this. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Okay, so that may sound like a whole lot of stuff. Hey, Apostle Weeks, God bless you. The key here, I want you to hear what Jesus said. The scripture cannot be broken. That changed my whole prayer life. That changed my, my whole life when I recognized that means when I declare God's word, love you too, Apostle, that when you declare God's word on the situation, bah, everything has to change because it can't be broken. Therefore, it has to be effectual. It has to do what it said it would do. I don't know. That, that was a huge shift in my personal thinking about the word of God. You know how something like it just kind of, it goes ka-chunk inside of you, sort of, it, it becomes live in you, it becomes effective in you, and it becomes like, okay, so when I declare God's word over this situation, everything else has to bow to God's word. Everything has to change. He can't break it. He can't change it. He can't alter God's word. He can't. And that gives me such confidence and faith um, that when I'm decreeing God's word, when I'm speaking God's word, when I'm sharing God's word, when he's hearing that word from me, that that is the more sure word that I can rely on and have faith in to see change in my life. That's the word I like. Yeah, it suddenly clicks. It's like I paint the the problem with the word of God. I paint a situation with the word of God. And then that's when you see the big changes. Ah, that's so awesome. So awesome. So awesome. It's it's uh, my target painter is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We talked about that last week. Paint your targets. But you need the word of God to paint the target. That's that's the laser beam. That's the the uh, sword of the spirit. That's um, um, Hebrews 4.12 comes to mind. It says the word of God is quick. Oh. And powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it's piercing to the, the dividing of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and there's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart Wow I look at that and I go man that's the Word of God and it cannot be broken it it will do amen God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Amen, Apostle Weeks. Amen. Absolutely. That's it. And when that word is in your mouth, it is that sword that slices and dices. Now, we know that Jesus 
in the in the wilderness when he was led into the wilderness and that's in Luke chapter 3 what happened what happened he rebuked the devil with the word of God with the word of God amen amen glory to God look at that amen hallelujah Luke chapter 3 okay Hallelujah. Well, actually it starts in Luke chapter 4. I was going to say Luke 4, but let's go to Luke 4. Amen? Okay. So Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. I thought it was just before 4. Anyways, everywhere that Jesus defeated the devil, he defeated the devil with the word of God. Dottie, I'm glad you're here. God bless you. You're here for the very first time. Yay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we get that? This is awesome. This is awesome. God, Jesus Christ, defeated the devil with the word of God. That same word as Apostle Weeks affirmed, in your mouth. In your mouth. Say my mouth. In my mouth. That word in your mouth will defeat the devil every time. So clearly, clearly we need the word of God for every situation that you're praying. Every situation. Hallelujah. Gonna whoop the devil with the word of God. I remember I was teaching a um a course in Vernon on prayer, and um it was wonderful had such a good time uh, and I was preparing for it. what would happen is Apostle Weeks was actually teaching the class on video format so I, re re I would review the video and then I would take the teaching go up there and we go through the video and then I would teach for a little bit on the subject that was just on the video and I'm listening to it and he's saying smack the devil in the mouth with the Word of God Hallelujah. We're, we're, it was awesome. It was amazing. And I'm sitting there and I'm studying and I'm listening to it afresh because I like to be prepared before I go teach. And, uh, and just wherever he was going, I wanted to flow with what he was saying at the time. And um, at the time, I was in the main sanctuary watching this on, uh, on the screen. And Apostle Weeks came down into the room. And the presence of God uh, just... It was amazing, and I know that it hit. It it actually just affirmed everything that he said to Apostle Weeks so powerfully that uh, the Holy Spirit just really, really uh, blessed him immensely at that time. Uh, I was be I was being blessed, and uh, it was so good. But this is a word, guys. The word of God in your mouth is just as powerful as the word of God. That was in Jesus' mouth. It's the same word. When he rebuked the devil, you rebuke the devil. The word in your mouth is just as powerful. It's life and it is light and it changes everything. I, I look at it, it can't be broken. So it comes out of my mouth, it's going to come out with the same power and effect. It's life changing. It's life transforming. Amen. I know sometimes when people pray, they're not sure if, the, oh, if this is going to work. And I want to really affirm that with you today. It will work. It will really work. It is powerful. And um, God's designed that for us so that we can take his word and smack down the devil in situations and circumstances and release that word for abundance and release it for a prosperity and health and joy and peace and every good thing. It's our banqueting table, right? It's a banqueting table of his word that in the presence of our enemies, we can just consume that word, speak that word, uh, release that word, and it, it, it manifests in the glory and the power of God. That's amazing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just looking at my no notes here. You know, God has given us everything we need. It's in his word, everything that we need for life and godliness. 
It's in his word for us. And that's the more sure prophetic word. Uh, it's, you know, that word, like I get a lot of visions. I get a lot of dreams. I've seen open visions, closed visions, everything. But everything that I see and hear, I judge through the word of God that I've gotten and learnt and seen in my heart. I judge everything that I receive, receive and hear through the word of God, whether it is in the word itself or in the principle of what was designed in the word for that situation. Is this in agreement with what God's saying? And so to be a prophetic prayer person, you have to know the word of God. You have to um, rely on that as your plumb line, as that that line in the spirit that lines up with the situation. Many times I'll be praying in tongues over a situation or a person or uh, whatever, and God will give me a vision. And I'll look at that and I'll line it up to the word. And I hear it and I write it down. And then I'll pray over it. And I'll release it. The answer, the antidote, which is in God's word. I may see someone going through a tough situation. I don't decree a tough situation. I decree the answer. I decree the promises of God. I decree what God's going to do. Because that's my job. When we're interceding for someone, when we're uh, doing that, what happens is we're decreeing the answers over that situation. Apostle Weeks taught me that. Because I'd come to him and say, I had this dream, blah, 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 blah. I was learning. And he'd say, oh, 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 okay. That's maybe what you saw, but what you need to do is declare God's word, the antidote for this to come to pass, for God to move in that situation. And I learned well. That was a great way to learn. Amen. Man of God, I hope you're still online. It's so awesome that you are here and that you even popped in for a minute. I'm really grateful for that. Uh, you know, uh, I learned a lot. I was trained through Apostle Week's teachings and trainings, for, and then I taught in the School of Ministry for a number of years. And uh, amen, Kenda, you want to have visions. Amen. Well, it starts with knowing the Word of God. And when you want uh, the Word of God, and you know the Word of God, um, great things will happen. We had uh, Apostle uh, Dr. James Maloney in, and he says, the more of the Word you have, the greater the Lord can use you in giving you visions and dreams because you'll interpret them correctly by understanding the word of God. So understanding redemption, understanding um, what Jesus has already given us, understanding the waves of the spirit will help you in, in uh, receiving more and more visions and dreams. Glory to God. Amen. The other day I was, um, I do a lot of coaching and I had a woman who, um, she needed healing in her body. And as I'm sharing with her, I actually had like a, a, a mini vision, but it was like I was seeing it as a hologram in front of my eyes. I was in this room actually, and as I'm seeing it, it was like right in front of me, and I'm seeing a picture of Jesus healing her. At the same time as I'm talking to her, I'm having a vision of Jesus already healing her. And so I needed to... Um, Hallelujah. I, I needed to um, share with her that vision. I knew that was from God because it was very clear. It was according to his word. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to pray for your learning disability because God has healed many people who were not able to hear the word of God or study the word of God. And we just, uh, we'll be praying for you at the end. Just remind me at the end, someone, that to, to pray for her. Um, at the end of my teaching. Amen? Hallelujah. So you get visions, you get dreams, but you have to have the more sure word um, stoked in you, placed in you. Um, you. And you do that by meditating on the word of God, by hearing the word of God over and over again. It becomes part of your DNA. Amen? And we're to renew our mind uh, to the word of God. So that when we see visions and dreams, we know what to what the antidote is. We know what the word of God says in that situation. That we can declare and decree the word of God in that person's life or over a situation. Very powerful thing to do. Wow. 
just about knocked this here. A uh, very powerful thing to do. Amen. Can I pray for someone like you said and give them a word? I do that, but only as the Lord leaves. It's not un, un, it's under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who gives the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who will give me words to speak over people. And if I don't get a word, I'm not going to say anything. I may prophesy the truth, which is by his stripes you are healed. And I can release that word over them and God can heal them because I know that is his will and that is his word for now, immediately. Amen. Same as deliverance, if someone needs deliverance. There are things you can pray for. But, you know, oftentimes when people are uh, praying for people and they say, I see you going to uh, to um, Timbuktu and you're going to uh, play the drums and, uh, and um, you'll start a business up there. You know, um, there's a lot of people prophesying, but who are they that are prophesying? You, you need to know them that labor among you, for one thing. Secondly, you need to um, know um, that they're anchored in a church, that they're um, faithful. There's a lot involved. Before you allow someone to prophesy over you, you have to know who they are. You really do. Uh, for instance, for me, people prophesying over me would be like Apostle Weeks. And Pastor Tracy Weeks would be, uh, you know, permitted to uh, prophesy over me or uh, his mentors or his his uh, uh, good friends that I know well, too. Um, I don't let anybody just prophesy over me. Amen. And I judge every word that I hear according to God's word. Amen. I judge it according to God's word. And if I don't have a witness in my spirit about it, okay. I'll put it on a shelf and say, Lord, you have to show me more about that word. You have to explain it. You don't have to take every word that comes because not every word is from God. That's why we need the word of God. That's the most important thing. And I, I find that many people, many people do not have a basic understanding of the word of God. They're looking for a word for direction in their life, but they're not willing to take the time to learn and to receive um, or to be taught um, the Word of God. And it's hindered their growth in, the, in their life, in their ministry, in their work, every area. The more we know about, about what Jesus says about our life, the greater, the greater uh, effectiveness we'll have in our personal life and in our work, our ministry, our relationships. It's so valuable to us to have that Word of God in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm 23, I like this psalm. I'm going to read this psalm to you because that it talks about the banqueting table and the anointing and the oil. And these are things that we need when we pray prophetically. You're welcome, Kenda. God bless you. We need these. We need the Word of God. And I want you to hear this. And you know, you can go to Psalm 23 and learn a whole lot. Let's go take a look there. It says, The Lord uh, is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now that's the more sure word of God. That's the redemptive word of God. This is powerful teaching. In this teaching, I want you to figure. take a look at this one psalm. This one psalm. Now, not all psalms are redemptive. Some of them, are, there's got some whining going on. And so you have to look at it through the light of what Jesus has done for us. But this psalm is amazing. I love it. As the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You just declare God is leading you. You just, just declared that Jesus is a shepherd of your life. You've just declared that he's in charge. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. And he makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, he doesn't make you lie down in the rocky places. He makes you lie down where there's food, grass. Amen. Something to eat. He leads me beside still waters. Now, still waters are are peaceful. It's not stormy waters. It doesn't lead me beside the stormy waters. The peaceful waters. So if there's no peace there, you got to look. You have peace in your heart about something? It's a still water. That's where God's leading you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He restoreth my soul. In days when you're feeling hurt, something's happened. It hasn't been a uh, good day. We have those days. We have those days in life. They happen. He's the one who's going to restore your soul. So you can say to Jesus, thank you for restoring my emotions, restoring how I'm feeling. Lord, give me your word on that. And he says, he will restore you. He restores your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. He will restore your emotions. You can trust him in that. So this is pictures. Lord, you said in your word that you uh, you restore my soul. Lord, I, I ask in the name of Jesus that my soul my soul be restored soul be restored in jesus name when you do that you're allowing the holy spirit to work it's the word of god we can we can go into that you could be praying this psalm over your children and and then an area will kind of highlight and pop up and you see that area and you go oh this i need to pray over my children in this area you're leading them lord beside the peaceful places lord Bring peace to them and show them the path that they should go. What are you doing? You're taking the word of God and prophetically hearing what God is saying at that time, in that situation, over that circumstance. And God will show up. God will show up in their life. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. They can't be broken. Hallelujah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Praise God. I'm just going to turn off that extra life it was starting to blink i was wondering if it was uh going to when it blinks it's telling me it's running low so i don't need a blinking light i'll just i'll just go this way here hallelujah okay but you're getting the point right you're getting the point of how we take the scripture so you're praying psalm 23 over whosoever something's gonna jump out at you Something in it may jump out at you and say, it's like it's lit up or it's like highlighted or, you know, how you bold it. It becomes bold and it's like, oh, that. And you'll feel like a yes in your spirit. No, that's the scripture you need to take a look at and say, pray over that when Lord and uh, ask the Lord to help you with that. And he'll show you. He'll show you. He's so good. He's so good. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you need fresh oil, you need a fresh anointing in your life. If you need it, if you look at verse five, it says, uh, you prepare, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. So you can ask the Lord for fresh oil. Lord, pour your freshness out over my head. Anoint me with fresh oil. Oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can receive a fresh anointing today. Just by saying, Lord, I need that refreshing. Your word says, you're the one who anoints my head with oil. Maybe the pastor does it, but I know it's coming from heaven. It's coming from you. And you're using the under shepherd, the shepherd over a church. Hallelujah. And God will anoint you with fresh oil. So you can look at the scriptures and find what you need. Amen. And, uh, and want whatever you would like, too. I like the first line. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means he's going to take care of everything that you want in your life. Because he said he would. It's his word. And his word cannot be altered. We talked about this earlier. His word cannot be shaken. It cannot be changed. Man, as a pastor, teaching people that truth. Family, this is awesome. When we see that, we can go, oh, we can have an assurance that God is... Jesus himself it says the scriptures can't be broken and that word is for you you're his beloved 
and you can have it. Hallelujah. So good. So, so good. Amen. Praise God. Well, I think I'm going to end that here today because that's that's vital is that we we learn God's word, you know, and I just got a comment back from uh, um, someone who attended our, our church for the first time uh, last week. And it was awesome. I gave her a little bookmark and on the bookmark were the promises of God, declarations, both sides, according to God's word that she could use over her life. Amen. So that God could bring those things into her life. Amen. We need those things. Glory to God. We need to declare God's word over our life. Amen. And we need to know that Jesus will do what he said he would do in his word. Hallelujah. Whether it's fresh oil, whether it's paying the bills, whether it's increasing your business, increasing your ministry, developing great relationships, whatever it is, We can go to his word and prophesy that. And then when we have that word in our heart and we know it, when we do get visions and dreams and panoramic visions and open visions and closed visions and and night visions and all sorts of visions and and, um, occurrences, you know, uh, that God does, we can can go to the word as uh, as our plumb line as that point of reference and go and have confidence in what God is doing. You get very confident in your dreams and your visions. You know, um, I, I, I love that. I have, I have one book that I use and it's all related to the word of God. Every, every sort of thing that's happening in, in it. And it has reference points to the vision and, and even though I am talking about prophecy and I am talking about prayer, I am talking about these dreams because they all work together. When I'm praying, I get visions. I get open visions. I get closed visions. Stuff happens. Amen. And um, even one time uh, after a prayer meeting, we had prayed and I was with a senior leader at the time in the sanctuary. And as we were talking about the Lord, uh, a flash of lightning went through the room and we kind of looked at each other. What just happened? What just happened? Amen. And when God was there, he was affirming his word. Amen. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. But you can have an expectation of the great things of God happening as you're praying, as you're interceding, as you're looking to his word. You dream a lot. Amen. You write your dreams down. Write your dreams down and then look at the Word of God and see how they relate to the Word of God. That's how you get going when you're starting to do prophetic prayer. And you, I remember I used to have these, um, before I, I was trained in the Word, I'd have these visions and I didn't know they were in line with the Word. And so I go to my pastor and I go, this just happened while we were praying. What does that mean? And she would she would explain it to me. So that's good to have people around then. Or, you know, your pastors are there to help you grow, right? They're there to help you uh, grow. So if you're having a vision and a dreams and things like that are happening, you need to talk to your pastor about them if you're not sure about them. Or talk to someone in your church, one of your church leaders. People who are versed and know the Word of God. And they can help you with the interpretation of the dreams and the visions. Some are better at it than others. You know, there's more... Uh, and if you have a um, a standing prophet in your house or your apostle is there, then you can uh, definitely get them to help you with interpretation. And that's why we need a church family, right? We need a church family so much. So important to have people that we can we can text and call and say, "Hey, this happened. Um, can you help me with that? Is this biblical? Am I off? Did I miss it?" And you know, it's okay if you miss it. It's okay if you don't quite get it right because you're learning. And um, yeah, that happens. But I'm a little off topic, but I'm on topic, if you know what I mean. So we pray the more sure word of God. Amen. Oh, I'm getting all sorts of interesting things here. Let me read this. When my friend and I were praying over my dad, I saw a lion and a lamb and a sword. 
Amen. That's just telling that Jesus is on the scene over your father. He's, he, Jesus is the lion and the lamb, and Jesus' word is the scriptures, in which, and he is the word of God. Glory to God. Amen. And the words at work in his life. I had a dream, and in my dream I heard a voice say, Dottie. I said, yes, but that was it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, Dottie, that's a, that's a, it can, it can be, um, a number of things, um, when you hear a voice and I would get you to read first Samuel and read, um, what happened to Samuel when he was a little boy. Okay. And it st starts around chapter two. It talks about how, um, he grew up and how God was training him in the word of God. And um, you, um, I don't know you, so to say it was this or that, at the moment I, you know, I know God has used that with me. I've heard his voice. And uh, yeah, First Samuel chapter 2. Yeah, and um, that's a good place to look and see how Samuel was trained. And I remember I, w I would spend a lot of time talking to my apostle, Apostle Weeks, about that. I'd be, uh, you know, say, hey, I had this dream, and he started correcting me. He corrected me, and uh, he showed me the Word of God, and he trained me. And I was, and I'm still grateful, for, you know, for all of those things. And that's why you need a church. That's why you need pastors. That's why you need trained leaders to help you, especially when you're learning. And even now, if I have a dream that I have um, uh, certain people that I know that are uh, prophets uh, that I can talk to regarding a dream, and I said, well, I saw this and this and this, and I know what I saw, what are you seeing? And I would listen to hear what they saw, because sometimes they saw more or something different. And uh, we would look at the word and we would judge it. We would judge the dream and we would judge the vision. It's okay to do that. And even in my church, you know, if, um, if somebody wants to stand up and start to prophesy, if I don't know them, I ask them if they wouldn't mind holding on to that word and writing it down because that is actually uh, the word of God to write it down. And um, then I'll look at the word and I will, I'll judge the word and talk to them about it. And maybe the next time they come, uh, they can share that word. Not every word is to be released. And many times I've had people wanting to prophesy a word in a church service. And it was a word of God, but it wasn't the time to release it. So there's a training that's involved with all of this. And many people don't want to be trained or don't want uh, correction, don't want to um, uh, uh, listen or follow the leader in a in a ministry. And if you can't do that, do... Um, that's tough because you have to learn to submit and to allow your word to be judged. Because if, if, if you're humble and your heart's right, you only want what God wants for your life. And listening and hearing and learning from those that God has placed over you only benefits you and allows you to grow in greater ways. Amen? Uh, you've, uh, you've had warning dreams. Absolutely. There's all different types of dreams. There's warning dreams. Um, there's uh, sort of like what you're going through type dreams. There's all sorts of different types of dreams. Amen. So when we're starting to pray, when we're learning to pray, the most important thing is pray the word of God over that situation. Pray the word of God. And if you don't know the word of God over that situation, ask the Lord. The Holy Spirit will show you and speak to you. And if you're still struggling, talk to your prayer leader. Talk to the prayer leader at your church. Talk to, if you don't have a prayer leader, if that's just, or your home group leader, or the deacons, or the uh, fivefold in leadership, talk to them about the situation. They'll teach you and help you and direct you. Maybe there's a good book that they have that will help you that has sort of subjects in the word. And you can look that up. And even even now, we can go to our iPhones, right? Our phones and Google um, um, a subject in the Bible, such and such in the Bible, and we can get some teaching. But I prefer to talk to people face-to-face -face, because that's what 
we're lacking a lot is hearing people face to face who have gone before us, who have been trained by the Holy Ghost, who are willing to give you the wisdom that they have learned over the years. That's important deal. That's important. Amen. Listen, I just want to um, thank you for joining me today. Please share the broadcast because somebody needs to hear this. And uh, it's a great way of getting the word out. I'm going to be doing a teaching next week, starting next week on Tuesdays at the same time. And it's going to be on the healing word of God. It's a healing school. And I'm going to be dealing with a lot of things. And if you look on my um, on my wall, my Facebook page, you'll find the information there. Now you have to sign up for this course. It's It's got a minimum fee to it. Um, it's because it's going to be four classes and I'm going to be doing solid training. Been in the healing ministry for 20 years. I've seen the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and it's been amazing. Amen. And uh, so for a small fee um, that shows me you're committed to, to come and to listen. And I can, uh, you know, when you're hungry, God can use that to give you even more insight. It's also a way of honoring me uh, for doing the work that I've been doing and taking the time to train you and teach you and to help you. And it's going to be in a private um, group. I won't be, um, uh, I'll be on Facebook Live, but it'll be in a private group. So you have to sign up for it. And I know it will bless you because not only does God want to heal you in every area of your life, he also wants to use you to heal others. So the the mandate of this little course, that this mini course here is one, uh, praise God, is first thing is praying for healing for yourself. You know, amen. I've had opportunity to tell a headache to go away in Jesus' name. And it listens, it just leaves. It has, it can't say, those are just symptoms. And I tell it to go and it goes. Uh, you know, uh, different things um, in my life. I've learned how to pray for myself because I've learned um, what God has done um, for me so that I can just deal with it. Uh, the other thing um, is praying for other people. If you've always wanted to pray for the sick or you want to be even more effective, um, definitely, definitely love to, to do that for you. I've seen so many people healed all over the world and it's been an honor and a privilege to do that. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, listen, I'm going to go now. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I see Rudolph, you just came online. God bless you. Uh, God bless you all. I love you all dearly. Uh, thank you so much for coming online. Hannah, God bless you, woman of God. And everyone else who joined me, Apostle Weeks, if you're still on, I love you, man of God. And I know um, hopefully you can join me in the uh, healing week that we have going. He uh, may have opportunity to, to be in one or two of the teachings. I'm not sure. We're just firming that up. I know he's got a very full schedule. He's very busy. And I just want to honor him always. Um, everything I learned, God... Um, God has has uh, used him as uh, my spiritual father to train others, to train me, but to train others. And that's the biblical ways of getting things done. And I'm very grateful. So listen, I'm going to say bye for now. I love you. God loves you. And next week at this time, it will be healing school, but you need to sign up for it. Hallelujah. Pray for you. Now, Kenda, what do you need prayer for? What was it you need prayer for? You you want to remind me. Thank you. A lot of stuff going on. So when I'm preaching, it's I uh, tend to focus on what I'm preaching and sharing on or teaching. Amen. Let me know what you need prayer on. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't see uh, what, uh, so I just bless you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, healing for Dottie, okay. Amen, let me look at this. Healing for Dottie and prayer for the other one. Well, I'm gonna pray for Kendall right now in the, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I command everything that is wrong in her life to be made right according to God's word in Jesus' name. I command a shift now to p- take place in her life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, give her wisdom to learn, wisdom to retain your word. Holy Spirit, you are her teacher. The word of God says that you are her teacher. Hallelujah. And that you are the one who teaches her. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will be teaching her your word and giving her insight and wisdom that will stay with her all of her days. In Jesus' mighty name. And Dottie, I just command healing to break off on you now in Jesus' name. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Sales at work. All right. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for the increase for Tracy in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. She has divine favor. Hallelujah favor in the name of Jesus Christ. I release favor over you. Thank you, Lord God. You are the one. You are the one that causes people to come to her. We thank you, Lord, that her products are good and that people receive them and it's a win-win for each and every person she comes in contact with. Kenneth, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, you're giving him a practical outworking of which way he is to go. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said you would lead him beside still waters. Still waters. And the still waters is a path of peace where there are no storms. So, Father, direct his heart in the path that it should go. So which way he goes, I thank you, Lord, that you are directing his path. You are directing his path, and he can follow after peace. Hallelujah. Need healing in my family. That's And that's a real general statement. Is there anything more specific that you can give me regarding healing? Hallelujah. In your family? Is it emotional? I feel it's like a emotional healing. You're very welcome, Ken. God bless you. Amen. I don't know if you go by Ken or Kenneth, so I'll call you Kenneth. Because that's what's written there. And I like to be honoring t- to everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I, um, I believe there's emotional healing that needs to take place in your family. Healing of connections. And oftentimes where there's healing of emotional wounds and, and uh, challenges, what happens is even physical bodies are healed. Oftentimes the root of it is something that is not... Um, it, uh, it's in the um, it's in the soul that the issue has been. So in the name of Jesus, I send forth the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, uh, I was seeing salvation and forgiveness. I'm re- releasing the blood of Jesus and to you and your household in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses everyone's mind of wrong thinking in the name of Jesus and allows the blood of Jesus, to heal family relationships in Jesus' name. And every blinder that has caused the people not to see the truth, I remove now in Jesus' name. Every wound, every every health issue, in the name of Jesus, I release the the blood of Jesus to consume and destroy the works of darkness. In Jesus' name. See, that's a more sure word I got for you, Anne, is the blood of Jesus. If you know some of the blood of Jesus songs, sing them. Sing them over your family intentionally. In your own private prayer time, of course. But sing the blood of Jesus songs over your family. The blood is the is is the card is is the um is the ultimate uh weapon that God has given us the blood commands passover to the enemy the blood of Jesus commands everything that is not of God to be consumed by the blood and to be removed hallelujah amen and amen praise god amen 
Betty Ann McCollum, God bless you. I remember, oh, Betty and I would pray together in my early days and uh, uh, praise God. We'd have some amazing times in the spirit. I love you. I love you dearly. Thank you for joining me online. It's an honor and a pleasure. I would so look forward to seeing you in the prayer room together with you. And uh, as we would pray together with the, the pastor, it was awesome. It was awesome. Those are amazing times. And uh, this is, uh, Betty Ann was one of my prayer buddies from way, way back. She's just awesome. She's just awesome. I love you dearly. I'm praying for you and your family even now, releasing the blood of Jesus over you and your household. Oh, and your family, you're serving the Lord and they're doing great and mighty things, Betty. I'm so happy to hear of all the good news. I kind of keep up to date sometimes about stuff that's happening and I love you all so dearly. Oh, amen. God bless you all. God bless you all very, very, very much. I love you. Listen, I've got to go. This is Pastor Denise Adams of Crystal Waters Church which is part of Crystal Waters International Ministries. I'm going to be back next uh, next Tuesday, but it's going to be a private sessions for the next month of November. And we're going to be in um, a private group for the uh, School of Healing. And uh, join me. It's a minimal fee. It's uh, it's an honoring thing, but it's also uh, it, it breeds a heartbeat of commitment to do the work together. And uh, I just appreciate that. And I look forward to seeing you. Come on. Here we go. We're going to have a good time in the Holy Ghost. We're going to learn so much about healing. You're going to be amazed. Just amazed. And I've got some stories to tell you that uh, will bless you. Bless you and give you faith to uh, operate in the uh, healing power of Jesus More information Christ. regarding our ministries, God please visit you. our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca. By phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562, Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B 7J4.